Hello guys, we are back with our next lecture. In this lecture, let us go through the next topic. In the last lecture, we gave some introduction about transport layer, right? Yes. So in this lecture, let us learn about the first protocol which is most commonly used in a transport layer. It is nothing but a TCP guys. Okay. So the full form of TCP is nothing but a transmission control protocol. Okay, so there are few properties about this uh, TCP guys. So those will be discussing and then we'll be moving on to the header structure guys. Okay, yes. So it is a reliable and connection oriented protocol guys. I'll be clearly explaining you what exactly is connection oriented like how exactly the connection orientation will be taken place. Okay, yes. Okay, so each unique number is assigned for each byte. So basically if you are sending a packet of 100 bytes from sender to the receiver so in the in that particular packet each and every bit is numbered guys so that much careful the tcp will be there so basically tcp is connection oriented and it is more must it is most reliable uh, transmission of data guys got it yes okay so now let us go through the concept of tcp header so tcp header is also similar to ip header if you recall ip header was also 20 bytes to 60 bytes similarly tcp header is also 20 to 60 bytes header okay so header is having the header part which is 20 to 60 bytes then we'll have the data part there is no tailor only in data link layer we are going to have the tailor guys got it yes so if you ask me what is the exact structure so this is the exact structure guys Okay, so it is similar to the IP only. So there are five columns, sorry, five rows, each of 32 bits. So 20 bytes are covered here and the rest of 40 bytes are our options here. Got it? Yes. Okay. So the first address is a source port address. Okay. And the second address is a destination port address, then the sequence number, then acknowledgement number, then header length, then six bits are reserved. Okay. Then some pointers, then a window size, then checksum, then urgent pointer, then options and padding. Okay. Yes. So each and every one, let us go in detail guys. Okay. So the first spot is a source, right? Yeah. And then it is destination. Okay. So I think there is nothing much to explain about source port and address port, right? Sorry, destination port, right? If you recall, I clearly told that the port number could be uh, 0 to 2 power 16 minus 1, right? Yes. So 2 power 16 what is 2 power 16 guys? I told you to remember the number, right? Yes. So it is a nothing but a 65535, right? Yes. Okay. So it, it will start from 0 to this number. So any number could be there in the port number. So that is the reason why we use a 16 bit field. Okay. So it is for source application and destination application. So who is sending and who is receiving? So both the port numbers will be contained. Okay. And the second part is a sequence number. Okay. So if you observe carefully the sequence number in TCP, if you recall, I told that each and every bit is numbered, right? Yes. So if we are having a sequence number of 32 bits, okay. So if you recall, what is the length, guys, of sequence number? Yes, it is 32. So it is indirectly 2 power 32, right? Yes. So if you observe carefully how much space it is, guys, it is nothing but 2 power 2 into 2 power 30. That is nothing but 4 GB of data can be transferred, right? Yes. So indirectly 4 GB of data can be numbered, numbered right? Yes. So now you got an idea, right? So what exactly we are, we are meant by sequence number and up to how much extent you can number it? Yes. Okay. And the next uh, uh, slot is for acknowledgement guys. So the acknowledgement number. Okay. So it is nothing but in TCP acknowledgement of X bit. If, okay. So assume that I sent a bit X to my receiver. So once he receives that X bit, he will send the acknowledgement of X plus one guys. The same concept. Okay. Yes. And remember one more important thing, the lifetime of a TCP segment or packet is nothing but 8, sorry, 180 seconds, guys, it is 3 minutes. Okay. Okay. So then we are having the header length. So basically, if you recall in, in IP protocol, we discussed HLEN, right? So it is nothing but header length, which is of 4 bytes. And if you recall, there we did the scale of 4, right? Yes. So that is nothing but a 5 into 4. So basically the numbers, if it is 4 bit, the number will range from 0 to 15. But the initial few numbers are not valid because the header length should be from 20 to 60. So which which numbers indicating the previous numbers like 16, 12, 8, 4 and 0. So those are invalid. So basically 0, 1, 2, 3 and 4. So these are invalid and from 5 to 15, it is nothing but 20 to 60 bytes because it is a scale of a 4. Got it? Yes. Okay. And after that, we are having 
some reserved words so let us keep this part aside for now guys okay let us continue with checksum so i think everyone knows the concept of checksum right yes so it is nothing but the checksum for the whole header guys okay so whole header and the tcp segment checksum is calculated okay so then we are having the concept of a window size the reserved bits and this pointers are kept aside for now so we will understand it so don't worry then we are having the window size guys so basically whenever a connection has been established so assume in this way so you are the sender and this is the receiver okay so whenever you send the data okay so there will be a buffer or something where the receiver will store that data right yes so whenever the data is received it will slowly fill that buffer right it will take from the buffer the packets or the segments one by one and similarly it is going to fill it also right yes so whenever there so whenever the sender sorry the receiver is sending the acknowledgement so in the acknowledgement the receiver will also say the window size so basically window size indicates how much is how many slots are free so based on that only the sender will send so for that reason we will telecast or we will say the window size got it yes so the field defines the size of the window in bytes that is reserved that the receiver has reserved for the incoming of the data from the sender got it yes so if you recall this is also of 16 bytes 16 bits guys so that is nothing but 2 power 16 right so it could range from 0 to 65535 got it yes okay so after that we are so if you understand here carefully okay so what is a 2 power 16 guys exactly if you calculate it it is a nothing but 2 power 6 into 2 power 10 that is nothing but 64 kb right yes so is a 64 kb a good thing guys if you ask me so if my receiver is only ready to accept 64 kb how many years or how many months or how many days or how many seconds will it take to to transfer one movie guys which is of 700 mb it will take lots and lots of time right yes so that is the reason why if you recall i told that there are some extra bits right so in option so we are having 40 bytes so from this 40 bytes i can take few bits guys so the most reasonable thing will be we will be taking 14 bits from it it's not bytes 14 bits from it so in total it is nothing but 16 plus 14 which will be ending up at 2 power 30 that is nothing but 1 gb so basically the receiver will have now 1 gb slot so now the movie can be sent in one single go got it yes so now you got an idea right so how exactly those option bits are helpful yes okay so now let us go through the concept of urgent pointer then we will be moving on to this pointers okay yes so basically what is urgent pointer is so sometimes some data will be urgent right so assume that you are sending some data to your friend okay so assume that you your friend wants to write the record so assume that you are semester record or something so you are you started sending him okay and once you completed your record you sent him that final pdf okay so it is traveling still and your friend is opening it and he started writing and suddenly you notice that you sent some other subject record okay so then immediately you will you will call him right rather than informing him in the message because that message should go through the line as assume that the network is really slow guys okay so that message should go through the line and it should receive him right so that is the reason we will directly call him and you will inform him that don't write the record please stop i sent you the wrong record i will send you the record again so in that way you will inform right so it is an urgent thing so in the same way sometimes in data also few packets will be urgent so there will there is some critical important or crucial important in it so it might be otp guys so whenever we are sending any kind of otp always that otp will be indicated with urgent pointer because it should be sent urgently instantly it should be sent okay yes so that is nothing but so this 16 bit field which is valid only if the urgent flag is one so basically here we are having total six different flags guys so among them the first flag is nothing but the urgent flag okay so whenever that flag is one in this urgent pointer you will have a address so basically this urgent point sorry this urgent data plus the sequence number up to that address we will read the particular data guys and the rest of the data we will read later on so in that way it will work okay yes so few students might be might not understand what exactly did i say so basically assume that you got a packet so in that packet i will write some urgent data guys okay so that urgent data will be here until here assume in that way okay so i will specify this particular address So basically, if this address is a ten thousand, I will specify that address, and here assume that the start address is thousand. So basically, the reader or the receiver will read only this part, and the rest of the data. So if there is a hundred lines of the data, so it will read later on as per its free time. Okay. Yes. So in that way, the urgent pointer address will work. Okay. Yes. So now let us go through the bits or flags which are in it, guys. So we are having urgent flag. Then we are having acknowledgement flag. We are having push flag. We are having rest RST flag. You are having sync flag. You are having fin flag. 
so these are the different six flags in that particular set guys so first one is urgent pointer so basically whenever you have a valid number or valid sequence in urgent pointer sorry urgent pointer you will make this one right similarly acknowledgement so whenever acknowledgement is there here so whenever acknowledgement is available you will write that acknowledgement here okay similarly push so assume that you are sending a message to your friend guys okay so you just told hi okay and now whatsapp is saying that please at least fill 20 lines only then i will send the message is it a good thing guys no right so whenever we want to send some small data it should go immediately it should not wait for filling that particular page or that particular length right yes so that is the same concept with push data so it is nothing but once you place one there once the data has been received it will push it that's it it will not check whether the file is full or not and all those things okay yes similarly rst rst is nothing but to reset the connection we will use this particular pin similarly syn is used to synchronize the syncing so initially this syn pin will be used at the initial stages guys okay similarly fin okay fin is nothing but termination of the connection so it is a fin guys okay like finished so in that way it will work okay yes so now you got an idea about the whole structure right so few students will be saying like what i did not explain about reserved so basically reserved means what guys what should i explain so it is, those six bits are reserved for further uses so there is no specific use till now so they, they, they are saving those six bits got it yes okay so options and padding it is based on the sizes so if you want to increase the sequence number acknowledgement check sum or anything we will be used using these bits got it yes okay so now you got an idea about the header right yes okay so now let us discuss about the connection how exactly tcp is connected and why tcp is called as connection oriented thing okay yes so whenever client and server wants to connect to each other so there is a particular process guys so first of all the client will be in a state called as active open so what exactly active open is he is ready to send the data okay and server b server is nothing but in passive open so it is ready to receive data from various sources so it is passively open okay i'm ready to collect the data send send so in that way it is waiting okay so once a client sends a request so here what he is doing he is sending sequence number 800 right yes okay so he is sending sequence number and he is activating yes is nothing but a sin packet guys if you recall sin is what guys synchronization for synchronization it is saying okay i am ready so let us synchronize and let us start sending the data so it is a request packet right yes so the server so here it requested for sequence number 8000 right yes and now what server will do is a uh, server will say its own sequence number like from which packet it wants to send so that sequence number it will say and it will send the acknowledgement for this address so it is 8000 right so it will send 8001 so basically it will always send the next bit so it will indirectly say i received x bits uh, send the x plus 1 bit now so in that way it will record it will answer guys okay yes so acknowledgement if 801 it is saying acknowledgement is available and it is also saying to synchronize the connection okay so now once we are here the connection is completely established with respect to client okay so now what client will do client will start sending the data so he will send sequence 801 and he will send the acknowledgement for this and he will say that acknowledgement is also there in my packet right yes and once this is received by the server server will understand that okay so the connection is 100 percent established so this is the three-way handshake protocol guys got it yes okay so now the data transfer will be completed so once that particular data transfer is done so now assume that the client is going to end the connection first okay so it will send the sequence number it will say the acknowledgement of y and it will turn on the acknowledgement and it will say that the fin packet so what is fin guys it is nothing but termination right yes okay so now what server will say server will send some other sequence number and it will give acknowledgement for x plus one it will say that acknowledgement is there and it will also say that fin i am also ready to disconnect okay and as both are ready so here server client will disconnect and later on the once the packet has been received by the server so it will understand that okay so the client is uh, has been completely disconnected so everything is fine now got it yes so in this way the tcp connection establishment and disconnection will work guys so now i hope everyone got a clear idea right yes okay so in the next lecture we'll be discussing about the states of tcp guys okay so that is one of the most interesting diagram guys which we'll be discussing in the next lecture okay yes so let us meet in the next lecture and discuss that particular diagram okay yes so let us meet in the next lecture and i hope everyone got a clear idea about tcp right yes so I think we have discussed in detail about TCP guys and one more important thing if you are getting some doubts like how exactly header length will work, how exactly acknowledgement will work, how exactly sequence number will work, please I request you to watch IP address header guys because all these parts so few of these parts have been already covered in 
IP ad, IP header. So it, the video was around 30 minutes because I have explained everything like step by step. Okay. So this video length is a bit small, like it is around 15 minutes uh, because I skipped those kind of explanation because I have already explained that because I don't want to repeat the same things again and again. Okay. Yes. So now you got the idea, right? So how exactly the TCP is working? Okay. So in the next lecture, we'll be discussing about the state diagram of TCP. Okay. Yes. So let us meet in the next lecture. Thank you. Thanks for watching. Like, share and subscribe for more awesome videos like this. Thank you.